Powered by MPB, this is Chalkboard Chat, an MPB education podcast hosted by Jermaine Flood and Tara Wren. To hear this episode and more, visit education.mpbonline.org or download the MPB public media app to listen on your iPhone or Android device. I'm Tara Wren, and this is Chalkboard Chat, an MPB education podcast dedicated to providing resources for teachers, parents, students, guardians, and education enthusiasts. Today, we are talking to Sheila Brown Robinson, Director of Early Childhood Education at Mississippi Public Broadcasting. Sheila, it's so good to have you here today to talk about early childhood in Mississippi. Welcome to Chalkboard Chat. Well, thank you. Thank you guys for having me. So, we'll start out with asking you to tell us a little bit about your work in early childhood in our great state of Mississippi. Thank you. It is always a pleasure to talk about the great work that I have had the opportunity to do for the state of Mississippi, working with Mississippi Public Broadcasting for the last 20 years. I started there as a very excited new staff member working on a parenting series. And from that, I just became so excited to be someone who has the chance to talk to teachers and facilitate workshops for parents and teachers about the importance of early childhood education. Over the last few years, we have done even more. We've had an opportunity to be a part of a grant from the Corporation of Public Broadcasting through a Ready to Learn grant, and it has given me and others in our department, our education department, a chance to really do some boots on the ground type of work. We have been able to facilitate workshops for parents and teachers. We have hosted events for children, literacy education events for children. We've been able to assist with getting reading in the home by providing books and other resources. We and I, I'm so grateful that we still make early childhood very important for the state of Mississippi. I'm not the only one, and through that opportunity for the grant and other things that we that I've had an opportunity to do at MPB is to get and be at the table with other professionals, other people who care about early childhood. So over the years, I've simply facilitated workshops I presented at conferences, and the chance to hear others talk about how they feel about early childhood has been one of the the great joys, too, because I'm not just a listener, I am a learner. And so in this role, I've grown in the last 20 years that I've been there. So it's, it's been a great opportunity, is what I can say. So 20 years is a long time to dedicate yourself to something And I can attest to the passion that you have for this work here at MPB in the early childhood sector. And it's been exciting to work with you and to watch you work, to watch your passion on a project as you move forward. And I'm just going to break down a little bit of what you said. Let's talk about the parent piece, because what I heard you say and what you do for the past 20 years, you've been able to talk to parents and work side by side with parents. You've been able to work with teachers. You've been able to work with the children. And another piece, in the community. So there is a holistic part of what you've been able to do in your career to live out that passion that you have to make sure that our children are educated at a very early age and they get off on the right foot. What has been the most rewarding part of your job? It's seeing children excited when we have a table full of books. It's seeing parents encouraging children to pick books that they know that they'll read. It's seeing the excitement on the faces of teachers when they hear something that's going to help them in the classroom. It's seeing both parents and teachers work together to ensure that their child, their children, receive a good start. Early childhood is important, and they see it because we make it known that this is where you need to spend a lot of your quality time. 
educating your young learners. So that's the biggest reward that I get when I see all of those smiles. Absolutely, and I'm sure that is very, very rewarding. So let's talk a little bit about your work with the early childhood educators specifically that you mentioned. You mentioned doing and hosting, facilitating workshops for them, and then you also facilitate the Ready to Learn grant, which also includes the educators as well. Talk a little bit about more about that work, specifically including Ed Camp, the PBS Ed Camp that, that's hosted through MPB. Ed Camp is one that I would do every month if I could. It's an opportunity that teachers gather, that they come and participate in a non-traditional workshop. That means we don't set the agenda, the teachers, the professionals that come in the room that are excited about early childhood. They set the tone and with the topics that they share with us of what's important to them is what we use to create the title of the sessions. They guide it. We facilitate it. And there have been some great discussions coming out of Ed Camp. We've had teachers who wasn't aware of certain things that was available to them to know that now. They didn't realize that there was others at other centers having similar issues. When they got into the room to talk, they realized that this is a helpful tip that I could use. Classroom management diversity, inside and outside activities. These are the things that they would talk about in the sessions. And I am blown away when I hear teachers sharing concerns and challenges that they've experienced, not realizing that their peers across the way are experiencing the same thing. Child care centers, owners, teachers, and all are in this room, and they're sharing these things amongst each other. They set the tone. They set the stage. And they leave there excited and ready to go and do even more based on the information that they received just out of them telling us what was important to discuss today. Absolutely. That is a, a wonderful program, a wonderful opportunity for teachers to learn from each other, peer-to-peer -peer learning, teaching each yes. other what to do, best practices. I have been a part of one of those ed camps here at MPB, facilitated by you, and I was just blown away. There were hundreds of educators there, and they put all the subject matters on the wall, and you guys categorized them, and then they went to roundtables, and they discussed those mm -hmm. issues and concerns with each other. And I'm just curious to know, you recently had one here in Jackson, right? Yes, we did. Due to the pandemic, it was definitely not possible for us to host it in our station. When, when you're right, we had over 100 participants that attended. This year, because of what all is going on, we had to limit it to 25 people. We had over 25 to register, but then we had to call them and say that we'll host something later for those who registered later and just allow the ones that register first to come. And we were outside and they definitely were the appropriate distance apart. And the same thing happened. The teachers shared their topics with us that they wanted to discuss and many of them that attended came up to me after that and said this was absolutely wonderful i learned something today and i'm going to use it when i get back to my classroom i love it when i'm able to share different tips with them to help them with different strategies on how to modify things in the classroom that gives me a lot of joy i think that i'm more excited about the sessions and the topics that they give them, they are. They just don't know it. I just have to keep a straight face, right. but I'm smiling the entire time. But I love hearing teachers talk and share with each other. It's an opportunity for them to collaborate 
for them to work together because the common goal is we want all the children that are in early childhood classrooms to receive the best start. This opportunity for them to not have a structured agenda gives them the voice, gives them the space to use their voices to talk, and I love it. It's, it's wonderful. So this year at your ed camp, what were some of the challenges that the teachers discussed because of COVID-19? It really was a long discussion because they talked about the challenges, of course, how keeping the children distant for them to keep on their masks, wash their hands, which they definitely stated that they wash hands regularly, but it was a little bit different when the kids have on the mask. The parents that, you know, were not allowed to come in and bring the children. And that was a challenge for them because the parents had gotten used to doing that. So the director and the other teachers had to step up and say, because of the pandemic, we're going to have to change that. The challenges were having a limited number of children in the centers now, in the classroom. And it was not having as many teachers because they couldn't have that based on the number of children you didn't need staff there so it was using the materials there you know they had to give the children their own individual items to use crayons markers paper so they wouldn't cross contaminate anything and the teachers keeping gloves on providing lunch how different that was that the kids used to go to a common area to all eat together but then now it was bringing the lunch to the children So it was a challenge all around that. The learning stays the same. They know what they have to do for that. But it's getting everything else that you wasn't used to to be now the norm for a little while. Right. And so teachers were able to share with each other how they Mm -hmm. perhaps handled each one of those situations. They shared different strategies that they use. Pick up time, drop off time, bathroom time. And again, lunch time, snack time, washing hands, all of that. They shared the different strategies they were using. And it helped one particular center that was there because they were trying to figure it all out. And the teachers were able to say, look, this works for me. Right. That makes the camp, I'm sure, successful when they pick up new strategies and tips for their particular Mm -hmm. center. So Ed Camp is one of the ways, one big way, that MPB education hosts teachers and administrators of our early childhood centers across the state. You also talked earlier about workshops for teachers, and I know that we do at least four of those a year. Can you talk a little bit about those? Yes, we do. We have one that I enjoy. Uh, No, we have two. We have all of them. We have all four of them that I really enjoy. You know, you're going to always have your favorite somewhere because of the materials and the resources that you use to facilitate it. Mm -hmm. And the new one that we did last year was the best teacher ever. Now, that is an agenda because Mm -hmm. we want to make sure that we cover everything that says you are the best teacher ever. We start it off by asking them the question of why you do what you do. And they answer it immediately with excitement. And then we go into reading aloud stories because reading aloud is so important for young children. It's important for everyone. But we talk to them about being the best teacher means that you go into character. You may have something going on personally, but when you are the teacher and you need to go into character, this is how you do it. This is how you become the best teacher ever. And we talk about different activities that they can modify from month to month, keeping the same learning goals intact, but how you modify to fit everybody in the room. You're gonna have different type of learners in there. This is what we do to make sure every child receives the information and that they go home and they can retell this story, they can tell what they've learned, they can share with their friends different things that they are viewing in the classroom, that they are listening to in the classroom, and the teacher, and the teacher takes on the responsibility of making sure that every hat that they are to wear in that classroom, that they put it on. 
when they need to. Because one of the activities that they do is that they make a very creative hat, an individual hat, using whatever materials that are available. And on that hat, they place the name of what they are in the classroom. The teacher, the doctor, the nurse, the lawyer, the, the firefighter, the this. They put that on there on that hat and that's what we ask them to wear and when you're in the classroom make sure that you're being the best teacher ever by doing what's important for the children and yourself teach the children with love have fun as they're learning step out of the box and do something new and different every chance that you get so we facilitate that and we give them all that we have and they walk away with amazing new ideas and a new excitement about reading aloud or, or sharing stories, being the storyteller, because storytelling is also something that they put on their hat. Right. So The Best Teacher Ever is a new one that we just we simply love that one. Well, it sounds exciting, and I hope that teachers listening will take advantage of coming to one of those workshops in the future. And we've talked Indeed. about Ed Camp and the, the other workshops and all of these workshops and the timeline and dates for them in the future can be found at education.mpbonline.org. Now, Sheila, yes. before we let you go, I want you to tell us one of your favorite stories in dealing with a teacher or a child or a parent. I know you have a lot of stories, over 20 years worth of service to Mississippi in the early childhood sector, but tell us one of your favorite stories before you go. I was in the Delta, and I was doing a series of workshops, and it was about six workshops, and I was on my third one when a parent came up to me, and because at every one of these workshops, at the end, we were giving books away to the families what's important to us in our department is that we assist with the home libraries. We want books all over the house. But I noticed that this particular child that came after the mom and I would talk, she would sneak a book, and I loved it. And the mom would try to tell her to put it back. I said, no, let her, let her take that. And the sixth session came and we were at the end, and during the session, I had asked a particular question about to share something with me. And the parent shared that the child had taken the book and had read each one. She would stay up at night, and she had read each one of the books. And she had shown the mother that she had learned some new words, had highlighted these words in the book. The little girl that came up, it was a little girl, and I asked her if she would read the book, and she did. The mother later told me that she had been placed in a special class and that they said that she was not reading on grade level. And I said, not the child that just read aloud to me and and aloud to all of us. And she said, I know. I'm going to have to go to the school and talk to them. And I said, you should have already been at the school. And I said that because parents got to take initiative to be your child's best advocate. If that child was not shy to read that book aloud to me and to the group. That means that somebody has just not paid attention to what she was doing. And I wanted the mother to hear me say to her that your child is a great reader and you are a great parent and a great teacher and continue to do what you do. That that, uh, happened years ago. But I've always realized, that's why I'm so excited about when we place books out on the tables to give to children, because I love it when a child picks their own book. I love it when there is an impact that we've made on a family. Not only was I able to facilitate something to the mother, but I was able to facilitate something to her child. And I was able to let her see how fantastic 
her child was to stand and read that book aloud, not be shy at all. Well, I think she that's... wanted her to see what she could do when others had not seen that, hadn't taken the time to do that. I'm driven by that. I'm driven by giving children an opportunity to learn and giving parents resources to use. I think that is a beautiful story. I love that you have such passion when it comes to the children and that you talk to the parents, you meet them where they are, and you give them the best part of you. And so I absolutely love that. So thank you for sharing that story. I also want to say that I just love how we always give out the books and what you said about yeah. making sure that the children have their very own book and letting them pick their own book it makes it special to them and they will read it. So, Sheila, I just want to say thank you so much for your service to the state of Mississippi in early childhood. Thank you for the work that you do here at Mississippi Public Broadcasting. And thank you for chatting with me today about your work across this great state. Thank you. I've enjoyed it. Have a good day. And it was certainly an inspiration and informative to speak with Director of Early Childhood Education here at Mississippi Public Broadcasting, Sheila Brown. And now we're going to talk to LaTanya Travis of Little Angel Child Care in Mississippi about her experience in early childhood education. Hi, LaTanya, and thank you for joining us today. Thank you for inviting me. It's an honor to be here. So, LaTanya, Tell us a little bit about yourself and about your work in Mississippi's early childhood sector. Well, I've been in early childhood for over 20 odd years. My mom and I started out with a child care center together in like 1998. I've been working with the children for several years. I've worked in Jackson Public Schools. I just love what I do. I have a background, bachelor's in education. I also have a degree in social work. I've been on several of the programs with ITERS, with Mississippi State programs. I've been on several of the other programs throughout the state of Mississippi. I held the OCY through Mississippi, came through the ECC as well, and that's just a little bit about myself. Well, you have certainly done a lot of work and training within the early childhood division. We like to always say we appreciate our teachers, those who are out there on the front line, educating our little ones. Now, LaTanya, earlier I spoke with Director of Early Childhood Education, who works here at MPB. I talked to her about the MPB Education's Ed Camp, which you participated in. Would you tell me a little bit about your experience in the Ed Camp? Yes, I did participate in the Ed Camp, which I have done previously several years before, prior to the one this year. I have enjoyed the Ed Camps immensely. I've had great experiences sharing the ideas with my peers in a non-traditional setting where we can just bounce off plenty of ideas that we use in our classrooms, and our centers, where we talk about things that we do with our children, with our staff, on a day-to-day basis, where one idea may be good for one center, where it may not be helpful for one, it may be better for another center or another student, and you wouldn't believe how these ideas help or how we help each other. And sometimes, you know, you can't reach one child at your center, but it may reach another person or another child at another center, and these ideas, you know... They just really help another person or another caregiver or another staff member, you know, in their child care center or things like that. You know, it's just really these ideas, you know, they go a long way. The Ed Camp, you know, it is so amazing because, you know, with these issues and these ideas, we talk about health and safety. I mean, it could be conflict resolution, staff development, you know, extended or playground activities things of those types of ideas. Sometimes we help each other think outside the box or outside the norm. So, I mean, I just love the Ed Camp because it's not your traditional child care in-service training where you just kind of sit and listen to the instructor, go off of PowerPoints and things like that. We get to put our own ideas together, our own input, and kind of basically put our own ideas and thoughts and things together. It is very, very helpful. 
So it's quite engaging. I have attended one and, and watched the educators interact and play off of each other and feed off of each other's energy and learn from each other. So very engaging. What was your biggest takeaway from this year's Ed Camp amidst the COVID-19? Because I know there are a whole lot of new challenges that educators face right now. I think my biggest takeaway from this one would be how to implement handling COVID, this pandemic, and our children and staff. Because I think it was a little challenge for staff more so than the children during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Because I think, you know, children, they kind of, they kind of go with the flow. They kind of adapt to all types of situations. Mm -hmm. But adults are, are more fearful or are less likely to take on a challenge more so than a kid. A kid is, you know, less fearful. Right. So when it comes to our staff, they, you know, you have to kind of talk to them and kind of get them going and rear them up. And, you know, they feed off of directors. They feed off of your, your leading staff that, or your staff development time and your meetings and things like that. So they feed off of you or, you know, your head leaders and things like that. So I feel like I got more from dealing with this pandemic and handling with our staff and how we help them to deal with and cope with the pandemic and how they can better cope with it in order to handle the children. Because once they know how to handle themselves and how to handle the germs and the parents and things like that within the center, they will better be able to handle the children right? and how to deal with the everyday settings and being able to comfortably teach the children. Right. So you mentioned the difference earlier in the ed camp type of training where it's non-traditional, you attend, there's no agenda. You all who are in attendance pretty much set the agenda. And you talked about how that is the engagement piece of it is totally different from other PD, professional development opportunities that you have had, trainings that you've had in the past. How would you recommend ed camp in the future to other teachers? I have always come from PBS Ed Camp or any PBS workshop gloating about PBS in their Ed Camp or any workshops from PBS. I absolutely love PBS Ed Camp workshops. I love it. They're engaging. They're exciting. They leave me fulfilled. They leave my staff fulfilled. We're engaged the entire time. We're constantly learning new things. I mean, it's always something new we're learning. I mean, you already know Cat in the Hat. You already know a lot of the PBS characters and things like that. But it always seemed to be something more that we learn or pick up. It's just always something new. Yes. So, I mean, I can always tell someone else, you're going to learn something you n never knew before. <laughs> well, thank you for that. So I have one last question for you, and this is a big one because one of the goals of this show is to make sure that people who are listening walk away with information or something that you have said that could really make a change, make a difference in their lives and in their centers and what they're doing with their children. What would that one thing be that you would say to another child care teacher or facilitator, owner, or even a parent, what would you say? I would say never give up on a child. Always continue to teach a child. No matter what, love that child for who he or she is and continue to nurture and give that child all that he or she needs. Give them the love, the comfort in the world. Beautiful. Thank you, LaTanya Travis of Little Angel Child Care. We appreciate you for coming on chatting with us on Chalkboard Chat. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here to talk to Ms. Tanjula Chambers with Over the Rainbow Child Care Center in Canton, Mississippi. Thanks for being here. Great. I'm glad to be here. Well, we're going to chat a little bit about early childhood education in Mississippi. And we know that you work in that sector. So tell us a little bit about your work in early childhood here in Mississippi. 
Okay, well, currently I am the assistant director at Over the Rainbow Child Care Center, but previously before that, I I worked in all the classrooms except school age classrooms. So I've been all around in child care. What are your thoughts on how educating our little ones has changed, largely due to COVID nineteen? The education part in the classroom has not changed much, not very much. It's just modifications as far as the cleaning of the toys and equipment. There are certain things that the children don't have access to anymore because they were sharing, you know, particular toys. But the the education and their activities that they're doing, we're still able to complete that in the classroom. You know, just like story time and things have been modified as far as the distancing. We have to stop a lot and do temperature checks often during the day. So children are getting a little more interruption in their playtime than what they normally would have more hand washing during the day but I think that the education part you know we're still able to do activities and you know carry out those things that they are supposed to be doing during the day. And I'm sure that has taken a a lot of learning for you as an educator and others who work in the center a lot of changes and you have had to learn so how do you stay abreast of the best ways to teach in your class and to make such changes as has happened due to COVID, what type of professional development do you participate in? Okay, our center is a participant of the Early Childhood Academy, and we have an early childhood coach who constantly keeps connection with me as well as the staff. She gives us a call every week, and, you know, she asks me what's going on in the classroom, and I'm able to share those things with her. And then she will give me feedback on what it is that I've talked to her about. And, of course, the Mississippi State Department of Health, who is our licensure, they send out info to us as to how things are supposed to be going at the center and, you know, what particular things that we're supposed to be practicing. And they've given us guidelines to follow. So that's pretty much how we are staying abreast of, you know, how to continue education in the center during this pandemic. Right. And so I've been talking to Sheila Brown Robinson here at MPB Education and about Ed Camp. And we know that you also participated in the PBS Ed Camp hosted by MPB Education. So tell us a little bit about that, your experience with Ed Camp as a professional development opportunity. Ed Camp was a really good experience, especially, you know, during the pandemic. We're not able to go to a lot of on-site trainings right now. You know, we got the virtual trainings, and that's good, and we got some self-paced trainings that's online. But it was really good to be able to go to a training that was on-site. And so all the CDC guidelines were met, and so I was very comfortable with taking myself and the staff to this training. And we know Miss Sheila, we've known her for a while, and so we already knew that this was going to be a, a really awesome training. Usually when you go to a train, all trainings already have a prepared topic that you're going to talk about and that's okay with ed camp it was open discussion we got to write down things that we wanted to talk about and the facilitators they took all of our questions and they grouped them and made an outline and the participants we were able to share ideas and listen to what was going on in their centers similar experiences that participants were having we were able to share with each other you know, how to come up with different solutions or, you know, different methods that they were using in their classroom. Because even though we know best practices for children, but it's always good to see how someone else is doing something, you know, to go back and and try to put that in place in the classroom and see if it's going to work for me, you know, that way. Another thing, too, that was really good about Ed Camp is the fact that it was very obvious that the facilitators were not just talking from a book. They both have worked in child care settings before. So, I mean, all of their information that they gave back to us was practical information. And, and that's a plus, you know, to be able to come to a training where the facilitators can actually relate to you. So, you know, hats off to Ms. Sheila Brown. I don't remember the other lady's name, but hats off to her as well. It, can't, it, was, it was very, very good. Even during the lunch break, the participants, we continued to talk and we continued to share situations, just things that we were, you know, dealing with 
in in the classrooms, and it was really good. Everything was was wonderful. Well, that sounds good. So one of the goals that we have for this podcast is for someone to be able to listen and to walk away with something that they can use right now. So I want to learn from you from Ed Camp this year. Can you name like two or three things that you could take away from Ed Camp that you learned from your peers that you could share with our audience? There was um, one particular question that came up and was about how to build trust with children. Trust, okay. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the participants had a lot of great things to say, but it was one particular participant. She said that you have to be consistent with children and that's how you build trust with them and what she meant was that you um you have to be the same way with children all the time in one particular instance when they come in in the morning and you brought you know all your problems in from home and you you know brought this into the center that kind of stuff it spills over to the children and they, they recognize this stuff and it, and it causes a, a negative effect in your classroom so she said that we had to be consistent with children all the time. We have to be the same way with them all the time. We cannot let what's going on with us outside of our work to spill over into the classrooms. If we got to be loving, we got to do it all the time. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> if you're going to greet them in the morning with a smile, we got to do it every day. Yes. Yeah. I can't mistreat you because I had a bad day at home, you know, but being consistent with children. Right. <laughs> consistent throughout the day, consistent with everything that you do with them. That's a great takeaway. Be consistent. Thank you, Tangela. It has been great chatting with you today on Chalkboard Chat. Before I let you go, what is the one thing in your heart about early childhood education that's you that says, if somebody walked up and say, you, do you know Tangela Chambers? Oh, yes, Tangela blank. Fill in a blank. Right. <laughs> <laughs> what? Somebody would say, do you know Tangela? And the thing that's in my heart for children is that I want to do the right things for children at all times. I want to be God's hands and his feet to these little children to show them the love of God and let it permeate through me. You know, we want as you know, child care providers or educators, we want children to be able to come into a safe learning environment you know that's what we want a healthy safe environment loving environment and it's my heart to also be able to reach their parents as well you know to educate them as well as with what's going on in child care and with the development of their children and you know to be able to help them in any way we can as far as you know the development of their child so it's like, you know, it's to take a village. It takes a village to raise a child. Children are my passion. I just want to be able to show the love of God to these little children. I want to be children's advocates. That's who I am. Well, Tangela Chambers, thank you for that. We are so thankful, and we applaud and salute our early childhood educators here at MPB. Of course, it is a foundation on which MPB was created to educate our children, to educate Mississippians, and we are thankful for people like you, Tangela. So thank you, Tangela Chambers, for chatting with me today on Chalkboard Chat. Have a great day. You've been listening to Chalkboard Chat, an MPB education podcast. To hear this episode and more, visit education.mpbonline.org or download the MPB public media app to listen on your iPhone or Android device.